بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of introduction to Islamic mysticism by Ayatollah Mutahari Rahmatullah Alayh and as you remember we reached uh, the history of Irfan and mysticism and in particular, we were talking about figures in the third century of Islam. We reached Harith Muhasabi. Harith is the name, and Muhasabi is the title that he was given. He is from Basra originally, the city of Basra. And the reason he is called Muhasabi is because. He was very much giving emphasis to muhasabatul nafs. As you know, in Islamic spirituality, a very important method of self-development is that on a regular basis, at least once a day, we would have a review of our actions and if there is anything good, we should be grateful and we should try to keep it and improve it. If there is anything bad, we should repent and try to restore the damage which is caused, try not to repeat. And in this way, day by day, we can improve. The famous hadith from Imam Qasim salam says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُحَاسِبْ نَفْسَهُ كُلَّ يوم. Is not one of us who does not keep a booking of whatever he does on a daily basis. Alhamdulillah, in the Hose series of Akhlaq, we had a few sessions on Muhasabatul Nafs and Muraqabatul Nafs, and those who are interested can refer to that. In any case, Haris was very much emphasizing on Muhasabatul Nafs, Muraqabatul Nafs, Muraqabat, self monitoring which is going on at the same time that we talk and we do something. Uh, he was very much emphasizing on this. Uh, he was one of the friends of Junaid Baghdadi. He was also contemporary to Ahmad ibn Hanbal. You know, Ahmad ibn Hanbal was very much uh, against al Kalam and any intellectual discourse in religion. He was one of the Ahlul Hadith, not Muhaddith. As you know, Ahlul Hadith are different from Muhaddith. Muhaddith means a scholar of Hadith. But Ahlul Hadith were people who were just literally following the words of Hadith, and they were against logic, uh, philosophy, even Kalam. In any case, Haris Muhasabi lived at the same time that Ahmad ibn Hanbal was living. And when Ahmad ibn Hanbal saw that Haris Muhasabi has interest in Kalam and has been engaged with the science of Kalam and Mutakallimin, he rejected him. And because of that, he was also rejected by people because 
Ahmad ibn Hanbal was a popular figure. Haris died in 243 after Hijra. 243 after Hijra. So he's one of the figures of the third century. The next person is Junaid Baghdadi. Junaid is originally from the city of Nahawand, which is Western Iran, uh, close to Hamadan. But then he spent part of his time in Baghdad. Mystics and Sufis call him Sayyid al-Ta'ifa, the master of this group. In the same way that Fuqaha juries call Sheikh Tusi Sheikh al-Ta'ifa, he was the master of Fuqaha, of the juries. Mystics and Sufis call Junaid al-Baghdadi Sayyid al-Ta'ifa. He is a moderate Arif Sufi. He didn't have that much uh, extremist ideas or radical ideas. As we said in the last session, some Sufis and mystics have shatahiyat. Means sometimes they say things that can be taken by those who are not familiar as exaggeration or as uh, you know a kind of shirk polytheism and so on and so forth junaid is one of those people who was very careful and it's not very much uh, known that he said any kind of shatahiyat even he was not uh, happy with putting on khirqe. Khirqe is a dress that Sufis used to have. And of course, the master and the uh, teacher, the murad had khirqe, and this khirqe was very important and should be given from master to the next master. Uh, so he was very hesitant to put on any special dress. He didn't want to be uh, singling out himself and even some people told him because of friends because of other Sufis you know please you also put on khirqe and he used to say if I knew that this is going to help instead of having this khirqe I was happy even to have something from iron on me but this is not going to help we don't need khirqe we need hirqa. Hirqa comes from ihtiraq. Means there must be a fire inside us, the fire of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hirqa is something external. And if there is a significance, we can have it on. Like, for example, if this is a dress of Rasulullah, or I don't know. But he was not happy to have a special woolen you know, dress on him and being distinguished from others. Junaid was nephew and a student and a disciple of Sari Sakti. Sari Sakti, we talked about him last week. And also, uh, he was a student of Haris Muhasabi. He died 297 after Hijra, around that time, it is said 297, so close to the end of the third century, he died. The next figure in this century is Zunun Mesri, the Egyptian. And he was in jurisprudence and fiqh, a student of Malik ibn Anas, the famous faqih. And in Sufism, he became the head of people of that time, in that area at least. And some people have called him Ra'is of Sufi, uh, the head of Sufis at that time. He is known to be the first person that introduced symbolic language to Sufism and Irfan. 
in order to avoid people who are not Arif to read and judge. So he tried to make things in the way that for people who are not familiar would not make any sense. And people who are familiar can decode what is written. Uh, so this is one of the characteristics of his way of teaching and writing on Sufism and Irfan. Uh, some people believe that he also introduced some neoplatonic uh, ideas uh, to Islamic Sufism and mysticism. He is believed to have died in 240 to 250 after Hijrah. The next person is Sahl ibn Abdullah Tustari, one of the greatest Sufis of the third century from the city of Shushtar, southern Iran, the city of Shushtar, which is in Arabic called Tostar. And there are some Sufis who belong to the order which is called Sahliye. Sahliye are people who trace their genealogy back to this Sahl Tostari. It is said that in Mecca al mukarrama he had a meeting with Zunur al-Misri. He died around 283 or 293. The next person is the very famous person, one of the most famous person in the history of Sufism, and that is Hussein ibn Mansur Hallaj. He originally, he was from Bayda, which is uh, near the city of Shiraz in Iran. And he was from the same area that people like Hafiz and Saadi were also coming from. But then he grew up in Iraq. He is one of the most controversial figures in Islamic Sufism and mysticism. He has many shatahiyat. And because of that, uh, he was uh, excommunicated. He was considered to be kafir. They did takfir on him. And then uh, in the time of Muqtadir, the Abbasid Khalifa, he was executed. Some Orafa like Hafiz, uh, the great Iranian mystical poet, say that with all the respect that they have for him, they say that he had this problem, that he was disclosing the secrets. This is a very famous poem of Hafiz. Guft an yar kazu gasht sar dar buland jor mashin bud ke asrar hoveda mi kard. That friend, that when he was hanged because of him, that wood which was he was hanged on was elevated his problem was that he was disclosing secrets he should have not said things that could be misunderstood some people of course are not that much positive about him and are critical of him some people think that he was not an honest person but Orafa Sufis have great opinion about him. And they say that what he or Bayezid similarly said, which you could smell a kind of kufr or shirk from it, was because they were in a very overwhelming conditions of experiencing great love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeing nothing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were like drunk people, not 
physically drunk, but spiritually overwhelmed. So they were not that much in control of what they said. Some Orafa, they call him Shaheed, a martyr, because he was unjustly killed. He died or he was executed in 306 or 309 after Hijrah. In this way, we finish a quick review of the third century of Islamic Sufism and mysticism. Now we start with Abu Bakr Shabli, the first person that Ayatollah Mutahari mentions in the fourth century of Islamic Sufism and Mysticism. He was very interested in personality and ideas of Junaid Baghdadi. He was a follower of Junaid Baghdadi and he had also uh, experienced and witnessed uh, the teachings and the life of Hallaj. He is originally from Khurasan, northeastern Iran, and there are many quotations which are cited from him. Khaja Abdullah Ansari says that the first person who introduced symbolic language was Zanun Mesri, as we said. And then Junaid Baghdadi came and organized this science and wrote and compiled books. But Shibli took it on pulpits. He publicized it. He died in the age of 87, either 344 or 333, sorry, 344 or 334 after Hijrah. The second person in the fourth century is Abu Adi Rudbari. Rudbar is a place uh, on the way from Qazvin to Rasht in northern Iran. So he is uh, by blood related to Anushirwan, Sasanid king of Iran. So he is a Sasani person by ethnicity. He was a follower and a person who was disciple of Junaid Baghdadi. He had learned fiqh from Abu al-Abbas ibn Shuray and adabiyat literature of uh, his time from Salab. Therefore, they consider him to be a person who knows Sharia and Tariqa and Haqiqa. So not only he was aware of Sufism, he was aware of also Sharia and Fiqh. He died in 322 after Hijrah. The next person who is very famous, especially because of a very important text that he has on Sufism, is Abu Nasr Sarraj Tusi from Tus near Mashhad. His book is Al Luma, one of the most important classic texts of Islamic Sufism and Irfan. He died in 378 in Tus. Tus, as you know, was one of the most important centers of learning and knowledge and literature in that time. Many of uh, masters of Sufism, either directly or indirectly, have learned from Abu Nasr Sarraj. Those of you who visited Mashhad, who have visited Mashhad, you know there is a grave that people respect and they call Pir Palandus. It's a mystical figure and 
he's known as the old person who used to make uh, palan like you know uh, something like a, a, a saddle for donkeys or you know animals they say maybe that person is Abu Nasr Sarraj because Sarraj can mean the one who makes Sarj and Sarj is the same thing something that they put on donkey on a horse to ride on easily the next person is Abu Fazl Sarakhsi this person again is from Khurasan. Sarakhs is northern Khurasan. He was a student and a disciple of Abu Nasr Sarraj, and he is teacher and master for Abu Sa'id Abu Khair. He died in 400 after Hijra. The next person is Abu Abdullah Rudbari. He is nephew of Abu Ali Rudbari that we mentioned before. He is one of the mystics of Sham and you know, area of Syria and Lebanon today. He died in 369 after Hijra. The next person again is a person who is very famous because of his book. Those who have books, they are very important because not only they have helped in developing this science, but they have also a great role in teaching and establishing this science. And it shows that also they were people of scholarship. Is Abu Talib Makki. His book is Qutul Qulub, The Food of the Hearts. It is also recently published. There are new editions of it. One of the early texts of Sufism and Irfan. He is originally from uh, Iran, from mountains of Iran, but because for many years he lived in Mecca, he is called Makki. He died in 385 or 386 after Hijra. Now we move on to the 5th century. The famous person in this century, someone that people like Rumi many times refer to him, is Sheikh Abul Hassan Kharaqani, one of the most famous Orafa. There are interesting and moving stories about Sheikh Abul Hassan Kharaqani. And for example, they say Bayazid Bastami who we mentioned before was long before Abul Hassan Kharaqani. He had died many years before. But they said there was a spiritual connection between Abul Hassan Kharaqani and Bayazid Bastami. And he used to go next to the grave of Bayazid Bastami whenever he had questions and issues that were difficult for him and asking. Uh, the spirit of Bayezid Bastami to help him. For example, Rumi says, Mulavi says, Bul Hassan, Ba'd az wafat Bayezid, az pas an sal ha amad padid. He says, Abul Hassan Kharaqani, many years after Bayezid Bastami came to this world, was born. Gahu bi gah. نیز رفتی بی فطور بر سر گورش نشستی با حضور he says every now and then with, without feeling any kind of tiredness without feeling anything odd he used to go and sit with presence of heart next to the grave of بایزید بستامی تا مثال شیخ پیشش آمدی تا که می گفتی شکالش حل شدی مثال means 
a kind of ethereal, a kind of barzakhi appearance of Bayezid Bastami was appearing to him like Tamathala Laha Bashar and Sabi and that you have in the case of Lady Maryam that Jebrail took the form of a human being. So something that looked like a human being, the spirit but with the appearance of a human body was coming to welcome Abul Hassan Kharaqani and help him with his questions, answering his questions. Mawlavi many times, Rumi, many times talks about him and Ayatollah Mutahari says that it shows that he had great interest and love for Abul Hassan Kharaqani. It is said that he had a encounter, a meeting with Abu Wali Sina and Abu Sa'id Abu Khair. He died in 425. The next person, again, a very famous person, is Abu Sa'id Abu Khair, Neishaburi, from the city of Neishabur, which is about 90 miles away from Mashhad, where we have Khayyam Neishaburi, the city that Imam Raza alayhi salam mentioned the hadith of Salsalatu Dhahab, Kalimatu La ilaha illallah Hisni. He is from that city and he is one of the most famous and one of the most spiritual uh, Sufis. He was very much in uh, a spiritual condition. He has beautiful poems. They ask him, what is Sufism? What is Tasawwuf? He said, Tasawwuf honest ke anche dar sardari binahi wa anche dar dastdari bidahi wa az anche bar tu ayad bijahi he said sufism is that whatever is in your mind any idea that you have leave it aside whatever is in your hand give it to others whatever comes to you jump so it seems that he was a person who was very much interested in jazb, in you know, a special conditions that occur. You don't have any way to bring them to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has flashes of light and spirituality, and you have to be careful and grab the opportunity. He had meeting with Ibn Sina, Abu Sina, and there's a beautiful story. It is said that one day Abu Ali Sina or Abu Sina took part in the majlis, in the jalsa, in the session of Abu Sa'id Abu Khair. And Abu Sa'id Abu Khair was talking about uh, acts of obedience and acts of disobedience. And Abu Ali Sina made this poem saying that, you know, we should not worry that much about sins and we should rely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he made this poem. Ma im be'afwetu taballa karde vaz ta'atu ma'asiyat tabarra karde. He says, we are people that are interested and have love and velaya with your Af, forgiveness. We rely on your forgiveness. And we disassociate ourselves from your obedience and disobedience. <laughs> Means we rely on, not on anything other than your af. Even ta'a, acts of obedience, are not that important for us. Anche ke enayate tu, anja ke enayate tu baashad, باشد نا کرده چو کرده کرده چو نا کرده If your favor and attention is there doing and not doing or not doing and doing are the same So whether you pray or you don't pray are the same Of course it's very surprising that someone like Ibn Sina has said this I'm not sure but this is what is said and Abu Sayyid Abu Khair, although he's an Arif and normally Urafa should say such things, he was not uh, in favor of what Ibn Sina said and quickly replied, 
ای نیک نکرده و بدی ها کرده وانگه به خلاص خود تمنا کرده او the one who has not done good things and has done bad things and still you want to be relieved from your bad actions بر اف مکن تکیه که هرگز نبود نا کرده چو کرده کرده چو نا کرده Don't rely on forgiveness of Allah only. It is never the same to do and not to do. It is true that Allah is forgiving, but you should not take advantage of this and think that, okay, we don't do anything good or we don't bother about doing bad things and Allah is going to forgive us. Another poem, which is from Abu Sayyid Abu Khair, is very beautiful. He says, فردا که زوال شش جهت خواهد بود. Tomorrow, on the day of judgment, when six directions will disappear, there would be no physical form. We don't have, you know, front, back, right, left, top, you know, bottom. Everything will not be any more like what we are used to have in dunya. قدر تو به قدر معرفت خواهد بود your value would be according to your understanding your knowledge how much معرفه you have you cannot say you know i am uh, taller i am older i am more beautiful or i don't know anything worldly cannot give you value فردا که زوال شش جهت خواهد بود قدر تو به قدر معرفت خواهد بود در حسن صفت کوش که در روز جزا حشر تو به صورت صفت خواهد بود try to have good qualities good virtues because your resurrection will be according to the virtues that you have not anything physical or worldly or material he died in 440 after hijra Inshallah, we continue this discussion in the next session. We are uh, following the order of the book according to Ayatollah Mutahari. And although we are very briefly mentioning the names of these figures, because the introduction uh, to Irfan, but I hope you would appreciate how in the course of history, constantly, Many, many figures dedicated their lives to spirituality, to mysticism. And if we mention these few people, these are the most outstanding figures of that century. There must be thousands of people who were practicing this. And among them, some people emerged as the masters, as the people who had their own style, their own ways of Erfan, their own uh, students and circles we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the souls of all the people who with good will pursue this path of love and spirituality and in particular we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Ayatollah Mutahari and all our great scholars who have kept for us the authentic Islam but with beautiful emphasis on love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iltimasa dua walhamdulillah rabbil alameen.